everybody. It's Miss Saha here in the home library. How are you doing? Are you doing okay? We're here at home with my family uh, and I can hear somebody's practicing their violin and I know somebody else is on another computer doing her homework. Everyone's doing their own thing and we're all still getting along and I hope that's true for you too. Take time to go for a walk, play outside if you can. Even though we're keeping our distance, it's still really important to get off the screen devices some of the time. Today's home learning activity that I want to share with you involves no screens at all. I'm going to use the computer to show you how to do it, but you don't need any computer device to actually play this game. This game starts by putting lots of lots of lots of little toys, little things in a bowl. Now you'll notice that my bowl is made of glass. I got this bowl at the dollar store. It's not an expensive bowl, but it sure is big. This giant glass bowl is full of tiny toys that used to be on the floor, under the couch, um, underfoot, pretty much uh, from anywhere in your house. So the first thing you need to do is scoop up all the toys from around your house and put them in a bowl. Are you ready? I'm going to show you five fun learning activities with this big bowl of toys with no screens at all. The first one is just a name game. Working on your vocabulary isn't just for little kids or English language learners, although it is great for English language learners. Um, spin your bowl and see if you can name all the things that you can see. I see a saxophone, a lizard, an octopus, a motorcycle, a rhinoceros, a jaguar. I see an anchor. I see a wheelbarrow. I see a tube of cream. I see an ostrich. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's an ostrich. Knowing the names of things is really important. So that's the first activity. It's just simply seeing what you see. The second activity is I spy. Have you ever played I spy before? It goes like this. I spy with my little, yeah, my little eye, something that is yellow. Let's start with colors. I'm gonna tilt the camera down. Can you spy something that's yellow in my bowl? Yeah, the basket. Let's play again. I spy with my little eye something that is white. Did you guess this helicopter? Nope, I was looking at the Danish with white icing. Ooh, that looks yummy. So playing I spy, can use colors, but it can also use letters. I spy something that starts with E. Egg. I spy something that starts with S. Saxophone. So playing I spy um, can take a variety of, of uh, forms and can, can um, go a bunch of different directions. So that's my second fun game. My third fun game with this big bowl of toys is a sorting game. Um, I'm gonna look for three things that belong outside and three things that belong inside. Can you help me? Hmm. I found a crocodile. Inside? No, I hope not outside. Hmm. Bananas. Inside or outside? You know, I might have to put it in the middle because bananas grow outside, but then we eat them inside. I might need a middle spot for things that can be both inside and outside. Rabbits. Rabbits are wild animals. They live outside. Tables. Out 
outside or inside? Usually inside, although I guess if it's a picnic table, it would go in between. You get the idea. There's the tube of toothpaste. That's an inside toy, right? Playing inside or outside is one kind of sorting. I could sort into things that are scary and not scary, things that are edible and inedible, things that I like and things I don't like. The sorting rule is up to you. So the first game we played was just naming things that we see in the bowl. The second was playing I spy in different ways for letter sounds, for colors. The third thing was sorting into different groups. Things you eat, things you don't eat. Things that belong indoors, things that belong outdoors. Those are three things we can play. Are you ready for the fourth thing we can play? When we make a guess at how many items are in the bowl, what are we doing? What do we call that? Let's call that an estimate. I wonder if you can help me estimate how many items fit in my ginormous bowl? Now an estimate should be reasonable. Do you think there are 50 million things in my gin gin ginormous bowl? Well, it's pretty giant, but it's not that giant, right? So 50 million is not a reasonable guess. Is 20 a reasonable guess? Not really, because I can see 20 items just sitting on top here, and we know the bowl is bigger than what's just on top. How will we make a reasonable guess? So maybe we'll count a few and see how many are on top. And then maybe we can do some multiplication or some addition to figure out how many might be in the big bowl. Talk with your parents about how to make a reasonable estimate. If I see 20 items here and the bowl is that deep, I know there are probably more than a hundred things in there, right? But how can I find out for sure? Counting. One, two, three. Wow, we're gonna be here a long time. When you count the things that are in your giant bowl, I have a suggestion for you. Let's make groups. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Look at these cute glasses. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Counting things in groups of ten is a great strategy because then when we have all our groups of ten organized, we can skip count by tens. Do you remember how to skip count? Let's hear your counting by tens. Ready? Ten, twenty, thirty, forty. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. What happens then? 110, 120, 130, 140. You get the idea. You can skip count by tens or by fives or by twos. It's up to you. So estimating and counting is the fourth game you can play with a big giant um, bowl of toys. I just can't get enough of these teeny tiny glasses. It's like a teeny tiny librarian should wear them. They're so cute. So naming things in your bowl, playing I spy with things in your bowl, estimating things in your bowl, sorting things in your bowl. That We've thought of four things. Are you ready to know what the fifth game is? And it's my favorite one. Can you guess what it is? Spelling. We're going to try to spell the words for the things that are in our bowl. Hmm. Let's spell glasses. Before you try to spell a word, let's stretch it out so we can hear all the sounds from the beginning to the end of the word. Can you hear me when I stretch out the word glasses? I want you to join in too. Glasses. Try it again. Glasses. Glasses. Hmm. How would I start? Well, I hear gl. 
which is actually a blend of two letters, G, U, G, and L. Let's figure out the vowel next. Glasses. That's right, it's an A. To spell glasses, we have glass and is. Glass is G-L-A-S-S. -S. To make it plural, we have to add E-S on the end, glasses. Every word you spell has learning in it. For example, we just learned that words ending in S, when we make them plural, we need an ES on the end. Um, let's see. Octopus. That's a great one to spell. Let's stretch it out together. Octopus. Octopus. You try. What does it start with? What's making that ah oh sound? Do you remember last week when we talked about vowels? If you're going to work on spelling with your child, hey, I'm going to talk to your parents for a second about spelling, just to let them know that vowels are the trickiest, trickiest uh, letter sounds in spelling. So making a little sheet together to review the five vowel sounds or the five vowels and their sounds um, is really helpful if you're going to try spelling things at home. Octopus. O C T O P U S. Now, when I was your age, spelling bees were my favorite thing. I always signed up and I always loved practicing my spelling words. If you are wanting to work on your spelling from home, um, you can grab a dictionary if you have one. Um, or I know I said this was not a screen device, but um, if you find that you want to work on spelling and your iPad or your um, computer helps you, you can um, also look up the spelling for things and then practice. So read the spelling, write the spelling, guess the spelling, try the spelling, and get somebody to test you the spelling of the words for the things that are in your bowl. That's five fun things we can do all with the stuff off your playroom floor. I hope you give this activity a try at home. And um, there are lots of other fun links to click right here in the library newsletter this week. I hope you have a great week of fun and learning at home with your family. And I'll see you next time. Bye.